Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 7th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. So the first model that we worked on was a linear regression model and then we moved on to a logistic regression model. We know that logistic regression is one of the most important models that we have in machine learning and in my previous videos I have explained you what is the intuition and math behind a logistic regression model and what is the loss function and cost function for a logistic regression model which is very different from the linear regression right so in today's video let's try to understand gradient descent particularly for logistic regression so there will be a quite a change in gradient descent and the derivatives for logistic regression when you compare it to a linear regression so in this video let's try to understand that so once we are clear with all these concepts in the next video we can uh, move on to the hands on part where we will be uh, building a logistic regression model from scratch in python okay so let's get started with today's video so I'll just give you a quick summary of what we have discussed so far about logistic regression. So we know that uh, logistic regression is a supervised learning model. So we know the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning model where in the case of supervised learning model, we use uh, labels and uh, targets. Whereas in the case of uh, unsupervised learning, we don't use any labels. So you can think about this as a, a classifying an image as either dog or a cat. So when, whenever you are using a supervised learning model, you need to give the images of dog and cat and you need to tell the model that these images represent dog and these images represent cat. So these, uh, you know, annotations represents the labels and the data is your image. Okay. And your model will try to find the pattern between the image and the label. So this kind of uh, uh, models which uh, uses both data and the labels are called a supervised learning models. Whereas in the case of unsupervised learning, we don't give any labels, we just give the data alone. So that is, uh, you know, the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. And the logistic regression is a supervised learning model where you need to give that label. And it is a classification model. So classification models classify the data points into different classes. Whereas a regression model tries to find some particular value. So you can think about regression problem as finding the salary of a person or predicting the temperature of a day and so on. Where you are trying to predict some numerical value. Whereas the classification models try to predict the classes. You can think about this as, uh, as I've told you before. You can try to classify the image as either dog or cat. So here you are just classifying the images. Or you can uh, predict whether a news is fake or not. Or you can uh, predict whether a is a spam or not so these are called as classification problems and uh, logistic regression is mainly used for classification problems okay so hence it is a classification model and then it is best suited for binary classification problem so there are cases where we have multiple classes so you know when you compare uh, uh, working of a logistic regression for that multiple classes and with binary class binary class in the sense there are only two classes as a yes or no question or you are predicting whether a person has diabetes or not so there is only two classes so these are called as binary classification problem and the logistic regression uh, works uh, best for binary classification problem so we can also use logistic regression for multi-class classification also but uh, it is more efficient in binary classification so for multiple classification we need to uh, you know implement or we need to add some changes to the model so that is the difference but you can remember that it is best for binary classification problem and it uses a sigmoid function so in the previous videos i have explained you what is meant by the sigmoid function and how this comes and so on so we know that uh, sigmoid function is given by this particular equation so y cap is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z and your y cap value lies between 0 and 1. So y cap is nothing but the probability. What is the probability that your y value is equal to 1? So if you are not sure about what all these things means, you have to watch the previous videos and I'll give the link of the previous videos in this video description. So please watch those videos before coming to this one. Okay. So this is our sigmoid equation uh, where uh, we will try to find the y cap, which is the probability of y being 1. So it is given by 1 by 1 plus e per minus z, where z is equal to w x plus b, where x is our input feature so whenever we are training a machine learning model we will give input features as well as the target uh, column so x represent our input feature say for example if you are trying to predict uh, a person has diabetes or not you need to give the input features such as the weight of the person the bmi of the person their blood sugar level age so on so these will be our input features and their and our output uh, value will be predicting whether a person has diabetes or not so that will be our target column and the other remaining columns are called as features or the input feature which is represented by x so so w and b uh, represents weights and bias which we have discussed already discussed before so this is our sigmoid function and uh, here uh, is uh, so this y cap depends on the value of z and this z is nothing but wx plus b so this is our sigmoid function and uh, logistic regression works on the sigmoid function and hence you get this sigmoid curve or a s-shaped curve okay and the final point is 
it uses a binary cross entropy loss function or a log loss whereas a linear regression use a least square error kind of a loss function whereas a logistic regression uses a binary cross entropy loss function or log loss and in the previous video i have shown you what is this uh, you know log loss uh, function looks like and we have also determined our cost function which looks something like this so j of w comma b represents our cost function so your cost function changes when you change the weight and bias which are the parameters of the model so your cost function we, we can write them as a function of weight and bias so j of w comma b is equal to 1 by m where m is your uh, total number of training examples so loss function so loss function is something which we try to find for only one uh, data point say you are trying to find the difference between uh, the true value which is y and the predicted value y cap given by your model if you do that for if you try to find the difference be uh, between the true value and predicted value for only one data point then it is called as loss function and if you take the average of all the loss function for all the data points in your data set and then it is called as your uh, your cost function okay so this is a uh, uh, you know formula for uh, determining the cost function and this is nothing but our log loss so your cost function would look something like minus 1 by m summation of y i log y cap plus 1 minus y log 1 minus y cap so in my previous video uh, uh, you know explained you in detail about how this cost function works and how we can find the cost function value for different value of y so so far we have discussed all these things now we need to come to gradient descent so what is you know the purpose of using gradient descent so once we feed our uh, data to our model it tries to learn from the data so what this learning means is it will try to find the weight value and bias value so this weight and bias is called, called as the parameters of our model okay so these are the model parameters and uh, we need to find the optimum weight value and bias value and for this the model uses gradient descent so gradient descent so we randomly initialize some weight value and bias value and our model reiterates over the data it tries to go through the data again and again until it finds the best value for weight and bias and uh, now we need to know what is the best value what is the best value for weight and bias and that is where cost function comes into play if your cost function is very high cost function it, it will be a numerical value if your cost function value is very high that means there is a huge difference between your true value and your uh, predicted value given by your model then that means your model is not working fine it is not accurate but if your cost function value is less then that means your uh, true value and your predicted value are close to each other then your model is working fine so what our uh, logistic regression model will do is it will randomly assign a weight and bias value and uh, it will try to find the cost function uh, respective for that weight and bias value if the cost function value is high then it will change the parameters that is weight and bias by a certain amount and again it will try to find the cost function value so this process will be repeated again and again till it reaches a minimum cost function value and this uh, you know algorithm or this method is called as gradient descent and now let's see how this particular gradient descent works so if you plot the weight if you take a weight in the x-axis you can take a cost function in the y-axis so this is you know the gradient descent is the same for all the models only some terms changes within the gradient descent so i'll explain you what is meant by that but this is very similar to our gradient descent works on a linear regression model okay so if you understand that you can understand this easily as well so let's take weight in the uh, x-axis and the cost function value in the y-axis and we know that this cost function value should be minimum and if you plot your cost function for different weight values you will get a u-shaped curve like this you can also call, uh, call this as a convex curve and uh, so let's say that we take a random weight value so in this throughout this x value we have different uh, you know weight values and we are taking different weight values now we will randomly take some initial value for weight let's say that this weight value can be anything so it can be 5 10 or uh, sometimes we initiate the weight with uh, zero so in most of the cases we initiate weight and bias with zero so let's say that we are randomly initializing uh, the value of weight so we are giving some value for weight and for this particular weight of our model our cost function is very high so if you come here we have this weight value and bias value so consider that we are uh, giving some random initial value for weight value and bias value now the model will find the value of z using this particular equation and then it will plug in the value of z in this equation to find the y cap value and from this y cap value and the true y value it can substitute this it in the in this cost function and it can find the cost function value now let's say that for this random initial value our cost function value is very high because this point is at the upper part of the y-axis now what we need to do is we need to uh, find for which weight value your cost function value will be minimum and that is this particular point so you can call this as the global minimum okay so 
we need to reach to this point from this point where if you take the weight value in this particular point so if you just uh, take a point from here and you come to the x-axis you have some weight value here in the x-axis if you take this uh, weight value and bias value you will have the minimum cost function because this point is closer to the lower part of the y-axis which is you know a lower value for cost function so we need to reach from this point to this point which is called as the global minimum so global minimum is the point at which if you take those parameters at the global minimum the parameters in the sense weight and bias value in the global minimum you will have minimum cost function so we need to reach to this point from there so uh, that is what a gradient descent algorithm does it will try to change your weight value and bias value so it will try to effectively change your parameter value until it reaches the global minimum okay so this is what we are doing in a gradient descent algorithm and we do this for both weight and bias as well so in this case it's it's a 2d curve so i have mentioned only weight uh, weight and cost function alone if you take both weight and bias your gradient descent curve will look something like this so it will be a three dimensional curve like this where we take uh, weight and bias in one axis uh, okay so weight in one axis bias in another axis and your third axis will be your cost function with respect to weight and bias and this will be your global minimum point where uh, at this point if you take this parameters of weight and bias you will have the minimum cost function so this is how gradient descent works and now we need to understand what is the equation what is the formula that's behind this gradient descent so gradient descent is mainly based on differential calculus and uh, this is how it finds that global minimum. So if you want a definition of gradient descent, it is given here. So gradient descent is an optimization algorithm used for minimizing the cost function in various machine learning algorithms. It is used for updating the parameters of the learning model. So we know that it is an optimization algorithm. What we are optimizing here is nothing but the parameters of the model. So we need an optimized uh, weight value and bias value so that we get uh, a, a very less cost function, cost function, which will give us an accurate model. And uh, the purpose of this gradient descent is that we know that it is its purpose is to minimize the cost function value and it is used in several machine learning models so it is used for updating the parameters of the learning model so if you come to this particular curve so this is the first uh, weight value you have you have taken and we need to change this weight value in consecutive uh, steps right and this is called as updating weight so we have this initial weight and then we are changing our weight value some by amount okay and this is called as updating weight so we keep on updating our weights till we reach the most optimized weight and bias value and that's what is given in this uh, definition this second statement which represents it is used for updating the parameters of the learning model so in this case the parameters are weight and uh, bias so this is how the formula looks like so w2 is equal to w1 minus l into dw and b2 is equal to b1 minus l into db where your w represents the weight of the model b represents the bias of the model l represents the learning rate so learning rate is nothing but what is the amount of change that you want to give to your weight and bias so it's like so we are uh, you know we are starting at some uh, random initial uh, weight value and now we are changing our weight value to some other weight value right so this is the second weight value that we are taking so we need to mention what is the amount of change that you need to give to your parameters or how much change you need to give to your weight so that is uh, you know represented by uh, the learning rate so that is represented by l okay and the dw and db so these are partial derivatives so dw is the partial derivative of cost function with respect to w or the weight or db is the partial derivative of cost function with respect to b so we are just taking the derivative of cost function with respect to weight and then we are taking the derivative of cost function with respect to b so the idea behind this is we need to check how much your cost function changes when you change your weight uh, and bias value so if you come to this curve we know that we are changing the weight value by some amount so when you change your weight value by an amount what is the you know amount of change that is happening to your cost function so how much uh, your cost function value decreases so that is nothing but our partial derivative of cost function with respect to weight and if you find how much your cost function changes with respect to bias then it is called as db which is the partial derivative of cost function with respect to db and when we when we implement this we can get this kind of a gradient descent model where uh, we can keep on updating our weights till we reach a minimum point so no matter where we start our our parameters like uh, in this case we have started from this initial value and uh, we kept on uh, you know changing the weight uh, value till we reach a global minimum so if you take a different uh, you know weight here so let's say let's say that we are taking a weight value which lies here 
and uh, if we implement grain in descent and then it will again uh, try to reach this global minimum okay so it will keep on uh, doing this until it re uh, reaches this global minimum okay so think about what this weight means and this weight means so we have the weight in the x-axis and this weight means we are taking an increased value of weight so let's say that this is the global minimum let's say that this uh, weight value is 5 okay so let's say that initially we are taking the weight value as 0 now the weight value should increase right so the uh, uh, gradient descent will keep on increasing the weight value till it reaches the global minimum and let's say that if we have uh, mistakenly taken the weight value as 10 which is a larger number compared to the optimum number in that case it will again try to reduce the weight value till it reaches the global minimum so no matter at what, what point of the curve you start it will try to reach this global minimum so that is the important aspect of a gradient descent model and that is given by this equation so when you implement this we can get that kind of a result so your uh, w2 will be your new updated weight the second weight that we are updating and this process will be continued again and again based on the number of iterations we give so we can give 100 iterations 1000 iterations so on and your model will uh, repeat the iteration until you reach a minimum cost function so w1 will be your initial weight w2 will be your updated weight and uh, your updated weight is equal to initial weight minus learning rate into dw and your bias uh, updated bias value is equal to initial bias value minus learning rate into your uh, db which is the partial derivative of cost function with respect to b now we need to know what is this dw and db in order to find this you need to uh, differentiate your cost function with uh, weight so if you do that you will get this dw value and if you differentiate your cost function with respect to bias value you will uh, get this db value so your uh, dw and db will look like this so dw is equal to 1 by m into y cap minus y dot x and db is equal to 1 by m into y cap minus y so this is your dw value or db value so if you remember our cost function uh, equation is this okay so this is our cost function equation so we need to differentiate this uh, yeah so this equation by dw once and then by db so when you when you do that you will get the dw or db value and uh, we use something called as chain rule of differentiation here and i'm not going detail into how we uh, derive this particular equation so it is a long procedure and it is not it is out of scope of this particular video so if you want i'll just make a separate standalone video for you know how to uh, determine the derivatives dw and db but we cannot do that in this particular video okay but you need to this is like very important so you need to uh, remember this dw and db equations so because we will use these two equations in our code so if you want i'll just uh, derive and show you in a later part of the course how we will get a dw and db but for now remember that uh, your dw is equal to 1 by m into y cap minus y into x where x is your uh, input feature your y is the true value y cap is the predicted value and your db the partial derivative of cost function with respect to bias db is equal to 1 by m into y cap minus y where m represents the total number of data points in your data set so if you have uh, 100 data points in your data set your m value will be 100 and it and it uh, you know if you have thousand data points it will be thousand and so on okay so this is the uh, equation for dw and db so this is very important so uh, w2 and b2 so these two equations and these two equations are very important for us because we will write these equations in python while we are building our logistic regression model okay so i hope every one of you uh, are clear up to this point so we use gradient descent in order to uh, find the optimum weight value and bias value and this is how we can use gradient descent to do that so uh, now I'm going to show you what are the equations that we need for building our logistic regression model and we will do this in the next video okay so the things that you need are first is the sigmoid function so we know the sigmoid function which is y cap is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e, e power minus z and z is equal to wx plus b so we know this this is the first thing that we need for building our logistic regression model and the second thing that we need is the equation which we use in order to update the weights through gradient descent so this is the equation which we have discussed so w2 is equal to w1 minus l into dw where l is our learning rate and b2 is equal to b1 minus l into db so we mentioned the learning rate uh, you know while creating the model so we can manually change this learning rate value so it's not an issue so learning rate is nothing but how much change do you want to impart to your weight and bias so that's our learning rate so this is the second important thing we need which is uh, the equation for updating the weights through gradient descent and the third equation that we need is the derivatives so the derivatives are nothing but dw and db so we know the equations for dw and db where dw is equal to 1 by m into 
y cap minus y into x and db is equal to 1 by m into y cap minus y. So these are our dw and db and we will be using all these equations. So totally we have six equations, right? So we will be using all these six equations while building our logistic regression model from scratch. So before going to that, you need to be clear about all these equations, okay? So uh, this is all the things that we need in a theory perspective before going on to logistic regression, you know, practical part where we will uh, build it in Python. So I hope you, every one of you is clear up to this point. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next upload and thanks for watching.